the UK press intro of the 890 Adventure and the 890 Adventure R. In this video, we're going to talk about the changes to the 890 Adventure R, how it affects its ability to ride off-road, and give you a little bit of insight as to how that bike feels. So this is the second part of the 890 press introduction. Like I said, this is a little bit different to a regular brake magazine test because we are getting a kind of light overview of what these two bikes work like. The 890R, we're only riding off-road today. So there's gonna be some limitations to what we're able to tell, but as with the normal, as with the 890 on the road, The idea of this is that the new bike has a new motor. It's an update on the previous 790R and predominantly this is the same bike. So a lot of the things about the way the bike handles and the way it works are the same as they were before. The biggest change is in the engine platform, like with the 890 Adventure and the 890 Duke. They've changed the internals a little bit. The capacity's gone up, the bore and stroke have both gone up. And so we have a little bit more power and a little bit more torque. I mean, this bike to start with was already, in my opinion, one of the best adventure bikes ever produced. It's a fantastic motorcycle that had a huge amount going for it. And I think the whole world realized when it came out that it was a big step forwards in performance and what we kind of expect from an adventure bike off-road. It's a very focused bike in general. It's extremely good off-road. But the one thing that I felt this bike had over previous generations of KTMs is that it was also really rounded. Maybe not the best if you have to do motorway miles, but everything else it was really good at. It was easy to ride relatively. It was super quick on the road. It handled really well for a 21 inch front wheel bike with 200 and plus mils of suspension. It was just a fantastic bike. But there were some limitations. They came up in both the tests we did with this bike, the single test and adventure bike of the year. And that was that when the power, when you were looking for grip, or, or you were trying to be gentle, low in the revs, it was a little bit difficult to ride. Uh, it was hard to feel grip with. If you live in the UK like we do and you ride a lot of mud or you ride in soft conditions where the, tr uh, the ground breaks away easily, there was a, there was, that was kind of Achilles heel really. You had to be a pretty good rider to ride around that problem. And if you couldn't attack the terrain quite well enough or you didn't have like a lot of trial skill, it, it was limiting, you, it kind of could start to eat you alive and get you stuck quite quickly. And, and for me, that was the one thing that I was hoping a little bit more torque would give this bike. It's really the only area that the bike has changed from previous generations that's noticeable in a single day test like this. There's a few things that are worth noting in that. Uh, it got a little bit heavier, but I, I don't think you can tell unless you're gonna ride it back to back. If you just jump on this in isolation, I, I've ridden one of these for, a couple of weeks in total and I couldn't tell the difference. The chassis to me feels nearly identical. It has the same kind of confidence inspiring, sucked to the ground, super composed attitude for the most part that it always did have. When it comes to that engine package, I think a little bit like the 890 has on the road, it is a little bit more rideable than it was. I think off-road, the jump doesn't feel in the tests that we've done today enormous. It feels like a, a, a tiny step forwards in a really good direction so that now you have a little bit more broad power to work with. You can run the bike lower in the RPMs a little bit easier. You've got a little bit better connection with the rear wheel to feel what the grip is doing and 
get it to fine grip and lift the front wheel in slippery conditions and do kind of more technical things. And I think no matter where your skill level is, that's gonna translate out well. If you're a, a little bit more of an entry level rider off-road and you're starting to try more difficult stuff and it's slippery, it's gonna help you a little bit. It's gonna be easier for you to not spin up. And if you are technically a bit more confident and you're taking this bike into more difficult places, you're coming from a 790, it's better than it was. I still think that that is a little bit of its Achilles heel. It's, it's not in the same guise as say a Tenere 700 is or a Triumph Tiger 900 is in how they deal with that situation well. I think if, you're, if, you, if you understand that limitation, everything about this bike otherwise is fantastic. It's class leading. The suspension is phenomenal. The brakes are phenomenal. And the one thing that this test today has really reminded me about the 890 is how good the electronics package is. The traction control is phenomenal. It, it is unbelievable how good it is and how little it interrupts your riding experience. I'm, if I don't want it to kick in at all, I have it in rally mode and I leave it on one and I just leave it. It lets me wheelie, it lets me power slide, it doesn't interfere with anything at all. And the same with the ABS. I think the ABS on this bike is class leading. I, I don't notice its existence in any way whatsoever. And that is exactly what you want from your ABS system. You want it to save you when you need it, but otherwise to just piss off and leave you alone. And it really does that super, super well. I'll tell you what. <laughs> there is shit all over my face, all over my arms. It's a fantastic motorcycle and I don't, I think if you're looking down this route and you choose this as your adventure bike or your trail bike or whatever, you're not going to go wrong. It's really, really a fantastic motorcycle and every time I ride it, it puts a grin on my face. I really think that's what a bike should do. So yeah. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to find out a little bit more about how this bike feels, we did a super detailed review on the 790 Adventure, which is essentially the same bike with a slightly older, inferior engine, but it handles very much similar and if you want to understand a lot of the handling characteristics and the suspension performance in way more detail than I've gone into now, that is definitely the video for you to watch. You can find that in whichever corner that's in. And if you want to see more videos like this about adventure bikes and trail bikes and so on, hit that subscribe button. We make videos several times a month at least about all of those different things, project bikes and bike reviews and so on. So stick around. Thanks for watching.